The following Four Aces production is for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is highly advised. There weren't no jingles playing, huh, Cole? Mm-hmm. Well, we are live on air now, and there's some jingles playing for everybody else, and that was our intro, and the parental warning let you know that we're going to talk some fucked up shit, so if you've got some kids around, send their asses to bed. Well, goddamn, goddamn. <laughs> Motherfucker, some bitch. <laughs> Get all these some bitch and goddamn fucking cunt ass things out the fucking way, all right? <laughs> Now, if you're still a youngin' listening to this, you're probably the coolest motherfucking youngin' in the class. <laughs> no so, <damn> shit. <laughs> so, with that said, we're going to talk about some shit that happened before your life ever started. <laughs> yes. Yes, man. Uh, for those of you who don't know, which most of y'all probably know, and if you're listening to this wrestling podcast, you probably listen to other wrestling podcasts. Which means you didn't probably heard all about it, as Cole was just saying right before we came all air on fair. But I just recently discovered Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, it's a new show on the Viceland Network, V I C E L A N D, Viceland Network. Uh, that, that hey, 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 um, please put a space in between there. I know, I know on TV it, it's together, <laughs> but don't, it's not Viceland, okay? It's not Viceland like Oakland, it's Viceland. <laughs> it's two different words. Just because they didn't put a space on the TV for your ass don't mean it ain't. Uh, they even say it's Vice Land. They don't say, welcome to Vice Land. No, <laughs> this is Vice Land. So please, Kevin, stop it. Please. All right, man, you can put away your grammar police bag. Please. All right, you can put away your no, grammar No, man, police. it's like somebody <laughs> saying, somebody saying, I want that very Pacific donut right there. No, motherfucker, it's a specific <laughs> donut that you want, not a Pacific donut, all right? No, now, no. if you're out at Half Moon Bay and there's a donut shop over there, now that is a Pacific donut because I'm pretty sure it got some of that Pacific Ocean in it. Oh, but man. normally your ass ain't next to the Pacific Ocean and you want a specific donut, okay? <laughs> you're looking in the glass. You know which one you want specifically, okay? So, but yeah, no, I, I, it's a pet peeve of mine, Kevin. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. You see this? You see this? I'm like Rain Man over words. 32, 32, 32. All right. Are you one of them dudes that, that, that sits there and wonders whether or not it's Siffy or sci fi? No, 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 no. It's sci fi. If, if, if you read anything about Siffy, that's syphilis, and you need to go to the doctor. <laughs> oh, no shit. No Siffy shit, means bro. you caught something, bro. Uh, but as Cole, as Cole, how do you say, um, suggested, what well, the the story of the first episode was a little bit before your time, unless unless you are age. Um, yeah, and, and yeah, technically yeah. It, it ain't. It was hop, skipping a jump, but to before our time. <laughs> so, uh, well, it's went, yeah, it's like yeah, I, I was a youngin, and you you was probably preteen. Yep. When this all went down, so. Like, we talking about, oh, yeah. The Muncho Man Randy Savage. Cream ah. rises to the top. Yeah, yep. yeah. Oh, cream. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh. Ah. You know what this is? This is a cup of coffee. This is about how long you've been around here, <laughs> mean Gene. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. Like yeah, Macho Man gave us some of the best pro- promos that that we've ever seen. My my favorite story of Macho Man is 
is basic basically Jake the Snake Roberts, and he told the story, but he didn't animate the story as he did on Joe Rogan's podcast, mm. the Rogan Experience. Yes. Um, fucking uh, all right. So basically, he's like, it's it's time for the snake to bite motherfucking Macho Man, right? Yeah. In the match later on that night. So they're in the locker room and motherfucking they're getting ready, and he come up to Jake the Snake and he like, so uh. The snake's fixed, right? It's fixed. No venom. No venom in the snake, right? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, the fucking snake. It's been fixed. It's it's good. You're going to be all right. Everything's cool. He's like, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. <laughs> man, the snake, snake's got to bite you right now. Right <laughs> now. And I don't want you to take no pills, no potions, no cure, no nothing. You just sit there and we're going to see. Because the way things are around here, hey, Venomous snake bites champ, champ champ dies, uh, or venomous snake bites macho man, macho man dies, snake's champ. That ain't happening, brother. That ain't happening. (laughs) This shit was hilarious when he said that, right? (laughs) Snake's champ ain't happening. Snake's champ. No, brother, not happening. It's got to bite you right now, and you're going to sit here. I'm going to watch you. So Jake, Jake the Snake's fucking pissed, right? So he pulls down his fucking sock. He's his off his boot, down his sock, you know, gets his calf muscle out. Fucking snake bites a hold of his fucking calf. He sits there. He puts the snake back in the sack. Sits there for like 25 minutes. Macho Man's like, all right, looks like we're good to go tonight, brother. And walks out the fucking locker room, right? <clears throat> so if you watch back the match... Between him and, 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 and Jake the Snake, Macho Man and Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake, when he pulls the snake out of the motherfucking bag, he sl- he basically paintbrushes the shit out of it. He sh- smacks it, uh, front front hand slap, and then just to keep the pimp hand strong, he comes back with a backhand slap just to the back of the fucking head of the snake. And this pisses the snake off, and that's why the snake wouldn't let go of Macho Man through the whole motherfucking, like, 15 minutes of it, it just, like, gnawing at him. And fucking, it was crazy. It was blood everywhere, and they tried to pull the snake off, but the snake was so fucking pissed that Jake the Snake just slapped <laughs> the shit out of it that he biting whatever the fuck he can bite, and he ain't letting go. Um, so that's what Macho Man gets for making sure the snake ain't the champ. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that has got to be a classic Macho Man line. Nope, nope. <laughs> macho nope. snake bite macho, macho man. Snake macho man champ. dies. Snake's champ. Nope, not happening. No. Because yeah, brother. The whole thing about it is, if you go back and you watch Macho Man in his prime when he went off, you could see him saying some shit like that. Like without a blink of an eye, you could see Macho Man saying some shit like that and being dead serious about it. And, yeah, and just, yeah, yeah, and, and and everybody, every single person that I've ever asked about Macho Man in real life, uh, it's like everybody that I've ever met was like, "Hey, what was Macho Man like?" He was like, "He's fucking intense on TV. He's fucking intense in real life. That's it. That's plain and simple. He's that intensity." But it's like, it, it's almost like a, a a a show that he puts on all the time. Cause you can get to him, you can joke with him, and he, he kind of cuts it back a little bit. But you know, when serious shit's going down, he's always that yeah, brother, oh, oh that, uh, like grinding his teeth. But so he tried to play the character in real life as well as fucking around the boys yeah. on TV and shit. And, and and yeah, so so much props to Macho Man, but this story basically was one where there were lots of stories like that, like the one he sold of Jake the Snake Roberts, but there was a very real and gritty side to it in the sense of learning kind of some of the things that went on in the WWF, which, like, don't get me wrong, none of this stuff is like, oh, my God, breaking news. Like, if you've been a fan of wrestling for the past 20 years, a lot of these stories you've heard before. Oh, yeah. Uh, about what these guys were doing backstage shit. Uh, I I have um, Mike Dross, the dumpster. Yeah. Mike Dross. I have him as my friend on Facebook. I, I'm, uh, I got him as a friend on Facebook through um, a girl at my job when I worked at Goodwill. Yeah. And he tells stories constantly, constantly 
about pill popping and partying with, with all the boys back in the day. Yeah. And, and, and so it's just like, it's just like hearing this stuff. It's not necessarily a surprise, but it's just like, it's just a reminder of how I'm not saying things are different now, but I doubt they party as hard as they did back then. Well, I think, I think to each their own. Um, and yeah, there's a lot more, you know, video gamers instead of fucking drinkers and, you know, yeah. that, that, that generation, the new generation is flushing out, you know, the, the, the stoner type, you know, have, had the party every night and all that type out of the system. There's always going to be that element. Don't get me wrong. Like, like there's always going to be your partiers. Shit, we went to a mansion party, but mm-hmm. you know, and, and with, with a whole bunch of wrestlers, WrestleMania weekend. But, but nobody was, you know, going crazy, or getting all yeah. fucked up, or some of the shit you hear. Those, those are, those are those wild ass, you know, weekends. That, right. that that's not just a every fucking party or all this. Oh yeah, yeah. we we hear, we hear, we might hear about five incidents, you know, throughout somebody's career of, of craziness par- parties and getting fucked up and all that shit. In reality, you know, it was, you know, maybe 10 total. We only heard about those five that, you know, got really fucked up and wild because it was a good-ass story. It was a fun-ass night for people, you know, most of the time. And nobody got hurt most of the time unless you picked a fight in the bar and, you know. Yeah. That was the 80s. That was the 80s. <laughs> every, every, every other weekend, it was like, did you hear about motherfuckers, uh... Dusty Rhodes got got in a motherfucking bar fight again. You know, him and Jerry Lawler down there in Memphis got them beating the shit out of everybody because they're trying to test them. They're trying to test them. Them boys don't know. Them boys don't know. (laughs) And I also think that I think another reason why some of those things die down is because I think people are starting that like wrestlers are not necessarily ones to fuck with. Like, well, like, they're still motherfuckers. Even, even uh, fucking Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels oh, yeah. had, had, had that dumbass at BTW that was trying to fucking at WrestleFest when it, they was trying to, you know, talk shit. And it was like, step the fuck outside. I'll handle you right now. And the motherfucker shut the fuck up. He didn't step out the fucking side. You know, I walked out there smoking a cigarette just to see if that happened. It didn't happen. Yeah. Nothing mm-hmm. happened. Well, of course, they, most of these they, guys they, have a tendency to break da- break down because they have a because when it comes time to actually fight because right. of the fact that the, 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 in their mind they don't envision the wrestler actually showing up. They right, 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 right. fake fighting and so on and so forth. So they expect do they expect the dude to to bow out and fucking disappear. And the yeah. reality of it is, nah, I yell it. Huh? I, I, hey, if you a heel, I'm going to yell at your ass. I'm going to talk shit to you. I'm going to do all kind of shit. But I ain't trying to fight you in for real, man. Yeah. No. Nah. I mean, I cut your ass. You want to fight. <laughs> like, that's a trained motherfucking professional athlete. You know? I am a motherfucking lion cook. <laughs> you know? Well, that and uh, I'm, if I'm yelling at you... It's if we fighting in the kitchen, I... Fry the shit out your face, I. Right? But you know, we in the ring. That's that's your territory, homie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like that's your kitchen. Like yeah, that's yeah, your I I kitchen, got, I Roman Reigns. I know I got beat. I know I got beat, but I was in your domain. Why don't you come to the octagon? <laughs> hey, I think Mayweather would get his ass whooped in, in the octagon against anybody. CM Punk would probably fuck, <laughs> fuck Mayweather. See, I don't up. think it's just as simple because I think there's a lot of tactics that he uses in boxing that as long as he as long as he was quick enough, he could implore in, in MMA. Yeah, he yeah, and he's, and, and he's and he's really quick. Fight. He he's really quick, but at a certain point the ref's gonna call it. Yeah. The ref the ref will take points for running. Conor yeah. McGregor's got points took it from him for running. But what I'm saying is, what? If, but what if he's not running? What if he's just dodging punches and moving out the way and then sidestepping? The oh, if he, oh, oh, then then he's doing him. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. But yeah. but you know, as long as long as it, he has a a a attack in the middle of ducking and dodging and yeah. you know bobbing and weaving, because even in boxing he be running, man. <laughs> that motherfucker moves so quick he be twisting and turning and ducking and dodging and he's running. That's what the fuck he's doing. He's just fast as fuck. He's running. 
<laughs> See, I don't know. But that's that. defense. I that's defense. I, got, I, I hey, that's defense. That's his defense. But yeah. he's so fast. By the time you throw, like, say you throwing a one-two <laughs> he combo, on, he on right? Yeah. You throw, you throwing a one-two combo, and he's behind you. By the time you get the two off. Oh shit! Like that's oh. how fast he. Is. I've seen the shit. He did it to Pacquiao twice. <laughs> Oh, there's one thing I wanted to say real quick before we dive into the wrestling wrestling. Uh, thank you to the Brocast podcast uh, out of England. I won some contest that they had uh, getting me a free pass to watch J&I Promotions. This is it. Uh, MMA pay-per-view with Lauren Eagle versus Myra Gomez. Um, and they sent me in my DMs the process to be able to watch it basically on them. Nice. Nice. So, so j- shout out to uh, the broadcast. Broadcast. Yeah, broadcast. The broadcast. Bro-cast. Is it with a K or or or? Yeah, or it's, it's bro. B R uh, big B little R little O big K A S T small A S T and then podcast. Yeah, they follow me. Shut up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Yeah. So, they, and if you want to follow Kevin or your boy Cole, just go to your boy Cole Jones. No, 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 oh, no, no. And, no. And, you, and you can get no. us both right through that link right there. You just say follow and it's done. That's it. No. That's all you got to do. No, just, no, no. You that just one get click. him. Don't buy click, that click. bullshit. Click, click. Just click, click. click. <laughs> just click, click on it, you know. You can click on it just all you click want. Click it, click. But then after you click it, click it, click it, click it, click it, click it, find your nearest at double K, K, double symbol and click on that and then click. Too many motherfucking names, bro. It's the same name twice, but different. What the fuck? How is it the same but different? But Uh, double. What? Huh? Man, Man. between you and these Golden State Warriors, y'all both killing me right now. Y'all both killing me. Hey, hey, what happened the other night, man? Who kicked that ball? Who kicked that ball? Who kicked that ball? (laughs) Who kicked it? Who kicked it? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Shit. There's a guy at my job that always asks the exact same questions. He goes, he'll, every time the Warriors lose, he'll be like, what happened last night? I was turned, I don't play for the fucking team, dude. I don't know what happened last night. We lost. That's what happened. Okay? You know what? Next time, next time he say that, he'll be like, man, what happened to your Warriors last night? He was like, all right, well, look, Curry stubbed his toe last night when his daughter <laughs> had a nightmare. He had to run and see what the fuck was wrong. So he was off, motherfucking Durant. <laughs> you know, he got troubles with his bitches. <laughs> just, just, I just start giving this motherfucker a list of problems, that, personal problems that these motherfuckers is going through. He'd be like, maybe that's got something to do with it. Or maybe the fucking Thanos had a snap. Maybe the snap done something about it. Huh? What the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> oh, man. No, you're right on, right on. All right, so let's get to talking some wrestling. All right, man. I Like, I'm not really even sure what happened a lot on this week's Raw and SmackDown. Like, there wasn't a lot of memorable stuff. There was some. Oh, man, um, I remember I remember two mediocre triple threat matches yeah. that ended up with AJ Styles winning one and Baron Corbin winning the other. And then they had to face each other in the main event, and AJ Styles won. So he's going to face it's, it's Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins at Money in the motherfucking Bank. Money in the Bank. Okay, so um, um, here's and my then issue SmackDown. That. I don't remember nothing on SmackDown. Uh, here's my issue with that. That should have been Drew McIntyre. No offense to AJ Styles. Love you to death, bro. Should have been Drew McIntyre. You know what? I think you're correct. It should have been <laughs> Drew McIntyre. It should have been Drew McIntyre uh, in Baron Corbin's place mm-hmm. for the main event against AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre squeezing it out. Yeah. That's how it should have been played out. That's how the storyline's been written in until this little switch of rule happened two weeks ago. So no, fuck you, AJ Styles. I'm sorry, but that's it. not your spot to take. Yep. You and gotta you wait. Know, you gotta wait till after. Maybe maybe you got McIntyre or maybe you got Rollins later on. But yeah, that was McIntyre's spot to take right there. And, well, and, and yeah, that, that was fucked. They fucked here, McIntyre here's in my there. Thing. And 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 he's not the chosen one anymore, obviously. No. Obviously, but and, and here was my thing. As soon as McIntyre lost that match, it wasn't McIntyre; it was Corbin. I looked at my fiance and I said, "AJ Styles is going on the face." Uh, what you call it? As soon as he, as soon as Baron Corbin won the match, I was like, "It's going to be AJ Styles." Wasn't even a yeah. second thought. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. I'm like, "There's Me no too. way that they're Me giving too. Baron Corbin this kind of push right now." No, no, he's he's just li- living off. The- what little heat he's got uh, off of 
used to being the the interim Raw general manager slash Raw general manager to taking out Angle at Mania. Three months from now, Baron Corbin is going to be nowhere. A nobody. He's going to be back to being himself. Um, I'm, I, I've never been a huge fan of Baron Corbin. His, his promos are stale. And this is not this is not me. Oh, I'm, I'm better than I know. You just never hit me right. There may be Baron Corbin fans out there that are like, fuck you, Baron Corbin's awesome. He's cool. No, he's His not. Promos he's really great. not. No, he's not. He's not. Not, not, not. I'm about to go back old school. Not a near nutter was good over there. Not a not a near nutter was good over there with nope. this promo. Not a near nutter. <laughs> and I ain't seen a great match out of him. I've seen decent matches, okay mm-hmm. matches. Um, what do they say? Um, he is a uh he's a journeyman. Yes. He can work a match, you know, but he'll never be that guy. Yes. He's he not that guy. Match. He'll he never be that guy. Good. It looked good. But yeah, you're right. A hundred percent. He he will never be that guy. He doesn't have the personality to. Like, I'm sorry. Like, whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, you have to make that connection with the crowd. And Baron Corbin just doesn't have that connection. Not in a positive sense or negative. You know, he he doesn't seem to be he can draw heat, but it's not authentic heat. It's heat because they hate you, not heat because of what you're because doing. Because you're doing. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, and, and so and, 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 yeah. and he'll take it either way. And which that's probably the continuous why we keep seeing him because we keep hating him. Yep. Um, Maybe if we just stop talking about him. Stop talking I'm about, about to brother him. love his ass. <laughs> Baron Corbin, I love you. Motherfucker, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, shout out to Pritchard. Yeah, bro, yeah. I'll say, uh, yeah, that one in, in the main event was kind of eh. But now, like I said, I, I do like the matchup of Seth Rollins versus AJ Styles. I do like that matchup. Um, but like I said, I just felt like this this should have been Drew McIntyre's time. Like, big big time, this should have been Drew McIntyre's time. Um, yeah, so I, I, totally, I totally agree. Uh, Storyline-wise and performance-wise, like, like, McIntyre should be there. Like, that's his spot. Well, oh, so here's an interesting piece of information that I Was, read on them on them dirty little sheets over there. You know, them dirty little sheets. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For those of you who wondered why Andrade showed up on Raw for the Superstar Shakeup and then showed up back on SmackDown Live. Yeah. Um, rumor has it. Well, first and foremost, congratulations to Andrade, because according to this article, he's engaged to Charlotte Flair. Oh really? Yes. Oh really? I knew they was dating. I knew they was together. I knew they was dating because at the Hall of Fame they was together they taking together. pictures and doing their little interview thing on the red carpet uh-huh. together. But supposedly so... what the story is is that Charlotte <laughs> went to WWE management and threw a fit because they moved. And said, Andrade. "Hey, my my fiance need to be on my show." Uh huh. And so they brought Andrade back to SmackDown Live. And also, there, there's word that happened. Well, that what about the Sel- what about Selena Vega? Uh-huh. What about Selena Vega? Because her husband is Alistair Black, and he on Raw. No, he's not. Alistair Black is now on SmackDown Live as a solo act. When did he go? When did this happen? He, he cut the promo this week on SmackDown Live. Man, all right, check this out. Because Ricochet is now so, on Raw as a solo act. That's that's fucking crazy because check this out. I don't remember SmackDown because yeah. only because I, I watched SmackDown. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember it only because my back. I, I woke up Tuesday morning and my back was all feeling like it's gonna be locked up and shit, right? Yeah. So so I did some physical therapy and shit and then went to work early. Fucking worked all day. Didn't even get off early. Um, did some physical therapy a couple times at work. You know, in, in between you know times I ain't had shit to do. Um, and fucking got home and took two muscle relaxers. Okay. And then oh, watched SmackDown. Yeah. yeah and then watched SmackDown. The and then I, I and I was, yeah, I smoked some weed. Uh, I drank two beers at work before I left. I, I, I fucking bought two beers right there and oh. fucking down them in like ten minutes. And then got to the house, popped the muscle relaxers, smoked the joint. SmackDown came on at five. You know, I was at home at four. SmackDown at five. I was asleep by seven thirty, right. um, but yeah, I, that's why I don't remember shit on SmackDown. 
and I took the rest of the week off, and yeah, so I I didn't go back to watch SmackDown. I just been fucking laid out. Well, word has it, according to that little dirty sheet, that this is part of the reason why that that this whole Charlotte Flair thing is part of the reason why Aleister Black and what you call it got split up, and why Chad Gable got got uh, moved from what is now Robert Rude. Yeah, I've seen Robert Rude. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> that change and and his his uh, Joey Ryan mustache. Yeah, see, here's the funny thing about it. My fiance says Burt Reynolds mustache. Or Tom Selleck, you say Joey Ryan mustache, but only because it's a wrestling. Like only Rick only Rude. because it's only because it's a wrestling reference, um, right, right. and it's a newer wrestling, wrestling reference. Re- uh, but see, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking WWE. I'm thinking Rick Rude. As soon as I saw the mustache, I was like, oh, so they're finally going to tie the two together. Because from the time I saw Bobby Rude in Impact Wrestling, I was like, Rude. Uh, it's always it's be always Rude. been connected to the Rick Rude thing in your yeah. mind. Yes, in I understand mind, yeah. that. And and I even did after I, after I said, oh look at that Joy Ryan stash, and then the Robert Rude and all that, I was like, oh, uh, is he supposed to be the long lost nephew of Rick? Rick, yeah, exactly. Like 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 that. I did go there, but that was secondary. It was Joy Ryan first because that was Joy the Ryan, first yeah. person that has a mustache in wrestling that that I know that's active right now. That was that looked just like that. I was like, eh, yeah, yeah. And Burt Reynolds had a way better mustache, and motherfucking Magnum <laughs> PI, Magnum PI had a way better mustache. And even if you want to go to a better mustache than both of them, you can go to uh, what's his name? Uh, he played a uh, uh, fucking. Um, he was in Ghost Rider uh, with Nicolas Cage. Oh, uh, uh, the special kind of stupid dude. Oh God, I know who you're talking about. What you talking about? Special? The uh, dude, he's in that poster. You got to be a special kind of stupid. He's in that meme. They got him sitting in the bar. Yep. It's always like, if you do this, this, and this, you that's... Yeah, he's in the ranch. Do- he's on the ranch right yeah. now. The TV show, The Ranch, he's the dad on there. Motherfucker, okay, what is his name? name Sam Elliott, motherfucker. Sam Elliott, there you go, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> it popped into my head. It popped into my head right now. It, Elliott popped in first, and then I was like, Sam, Sam yeah. Elliott. Yeah. That motherfucker, that's a stash. Now, yeah, he <laughs> he he got a baby stash compared to that one. But, uh-huh. but yeah, I, I thought Joey Ryan, then I did, you know do the connection with the Rick Rude and Robert Rude bullshit, you know, it's like, oh, well, if he, if he got a little, if he left a, a little stubble yeah. as his beard, then I would have definitely went the Rick Rude. There, yeah. Rick Rude, boom, guaranteed. But since it was just a, a clean shave with just a stash, I went straight to Joey Ryan, all right, all right. which Joey yeah. Ryan does a stubble himself, but it's not as prominent as Rick Rude's was. Fair enough, fair enough. The stash is more prominent, you know. Because Rick Rue had that black hair, you know, and that black, you know, stubble that that, that comes out, that pops. <laughs> oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I seen that bullshit. So uh, that's the reason why Alistair Black and, and Ricochet broke up. They, so is this because they, they say that that's part of the reason is because, because they, they were trying to balance out the rosters with having to move Andrade back to uh, SmackDown Live. Because if you notice, Naomi got moved to Raw as well as the Usos. Like, so I understand where she would have leverage and a point to go to WWE management and be like, hey, y'all move them together specifically to keep them together, but you're splitting me up from my fiance? Yeah, but why Why did they split up Ricochet and Alistair? I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't, I don't either. And it might be because Selena Vega is married to Alistair and she's on SmackDown. So he's on SmackDown now. So yeah, it's like cu- couples, couples are in oh, together. Man. Let me write when Charlotte line now. fucking ruining Vega shit. Vega turns on, uh, since everybody pretty much at this point already knows that she's married to Alistair Black. Like every wrestling fan pretty much knows. At some point yeah. she turns on Andrade for Alistair Black to become his, to become his, uh, whatchamacallit. And Charlotte comes out to defend yeah, her exactly. man. Yeah. And Charlotte comes out to defend her man. And then you got, you got. <laughs> but you know the only fucking. You got, you got, it. you you basically got David and Goliath. Yeah, I was you got say, this yeah. little Mexican chick against this big blonde <laughs> American bitch. You know what I'm saying? Man. It's like, oh my God. Any and she's going to be like, maybe we should build a wall. And she's like, bitch, I'll just claim all man. <laughs> no, no, I'm have you not you, seen Lucha Libre we fly bitch we fly dude, I'm telling uh, you, in my mind it's like only reason that would be fucked up is exactly that the size difference between Charlotte Flair and Selena Vega would just what? They would come have, they would on have to be bro 
It would have to be mixed match. Come on. How many times did Rey Mysterio and Batista rock the house? Yeah, but Selena Vega ain't no ain't no Rey Mysterio. I'm sorry. She just You ain't you you ain't seen her in action? You ain't seen her shit? You ain't watch her shit? Just, I man, have. you better the matches that I've seen better her in on Raw you better Smackdown, recognize. She hasn't really showed me a lot. Maybe you better I need to go recognize. Back and watch her NXT stuff. You better go recognize. You better recognize. Selena Vega. You I type recognize. that shit in <laughs> YouTube. You type that shit in YouTube and you sit there for hours. Don't masturbate. Uh, Watch. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> That's Cole's piece of advice. And on that note, we'll run some commercials for y'all right quick. And that's um, that's it. You you masturbate during the ads and the commercials. No, no. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's quick. And, it's about a uh, minute thirty seconds. We'll be right back. No. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah, pretty much. About two minutes and we'll be right back. <laughs> You're listening to the Raw Impact Unleashed. Right here on Spricker.com, for instance presents radio. I heart spot. If you're on uh, Mars, uh, we're on m Hey, listener, Dutch here from Voice from the Underground, the podcast. My co-host and I want to invite you to check out our little corner of the podcast verse. At Voice from the Underground, we talk about all the crazy shit happening around us and try to make a little bit of sense out of the nonsense with little to no results. If the idea of hearing three semi-intelligent, outspoken nerds talk about politics, social issues, current events, sports, movies, pretty much anything that we decide to talk about because, well, it's our show, appeals to you, grab your shovel and come on down to the underground and then consult a qualified psychotherapist. Find us wherever you get your podcasts, just not where you buy your weed. Boys from the underground. Man brain. You know you want it. You know you need it. Let me introduce you to our team of audio professionals, 100% committed to giving you the greatest extreme comedy podcast of all time. Um, what, what's, um, S-P-H, um, I'm so super cute. Send me your orgasmic release videos. You can get it rooting. You can get it tooting. You can get it doing doughies in your yeet. Mi nombre es Tio Yeti. And you just laugh at little Hank. I ain't gonna pretend I is fresh. But looks like you might like that. And most importantly, I'm Skulka. Go to manbrainpodcast.com to get orally violated. Manbrain out. Hello, Radio World. This is K-Double here to let you know about KD5P, K-Double's fifth period music class, a bi-weekly music show here on the 4 Aces Presents Radio Network, where every other Friday night at 8, I take you on a musical journey through the careers of some of your favorite musical artists. So check me out on Spreaker.com backslash 4 Aces Presents Radio or on iHeartRadio every other Friday at 8 p.m. on Revolving Door Episodes. Peace. Peace. KD5P. Hello. I was going to get people. I was going to get people until Monday. <laughs> Monday. I was thinking about doing it. I was thinking about doing a show tonight, but I'm like, nah, fuck it. My back's hurting. I'm going to yeah. take a couple muscle relaxers after this show. I'm going to motherfucking watch, uh, like, uh, MacGyver and Hawaii Five O back to back because they come on at 8 and 9, respectively. Yeah. And and I'm going to motherfucking go to sleep. I got to get up early in the morning and go to the dump. So, yeah. There you go. I ain't, try, I ain't trying to do nothing. Oh, um, yeah. well, but no, it, it's still, my, just so y'all understand – what what we're talking about? It's the uh, I'm on this kick today. I've been on it all day. I got into it with Suave earlier today about some other shit, but I've been on this kick all day. Where I'm sick and tired of seeing people on Facebook talking about. Please don't post spoilers. Please don't post spoilers. Look, look. Put down your Facebook. Put down your phone. 
Leave your laptop alone until after you see the movie. Don't come bitching on Facebook about don't post spoilers and telling me what to post and what not to post on my shit. Either unfollow me or stay your bitch ass off of social media until after you see the movie. But don't come at me telling me not to do this and not to post that on my page because because you don't want to know the ending to the movie. Yeah. You want to wait till next. No, no, no. Take, take that shit elsewhere. And so I got on this big tangent today of, of telling people just fuck you and you're not, not wanting spoilers. Because I'm the type of person that you could tell me, to, like I said in my Facebook post, you could recite the entire script to me and I would still enjoy the movie. Oh, you yeah? could act out the entire final oh, sequence yeah? and I would still oh, enjoy yeah? the movie. You think so? Oh, I know you think so. so? All right. Well, check this out. My favorite scene, and you'll know it when you see it, you'll know it when it happens. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna set it up for you. You'll know it when it happens. All right. It's in the middle of a fight. Okay. Uh-huh. One guy grabs this one thing and does something. Okay. And it's amazing. Okay. All right. And okay, Thor says. And Thor says, "I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you three words. Uh-huh. I knew it." That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh my god, it's so good. I gotta watch it again. Like, ah, I'm, watching it, I'm, watching it, I'm watching it as soon as I get done. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, my god. oh, shit, I might even start oh, during oh and spoiler movie. alert. There's two snaps in the movie, motherfuckers. <laughs> There's two snaps, two times. Snap, snap. Oh, but anyway, anyway, is, anyway, anyway. But yeah, that's what I was uh, talking let's about. Get yeah, yeah, let's, let's get back to wrestling. Let's get back to wrestling. wrestling. So, okay. So that was the whole story with, with why they split up Alistair, with maybe why they split up Alistair Black and, and Ricochet, and why Andrade made the jump to Raw and then back to SmackDown all of a sudden. Um, so, uh, but but overall, I think the superstar shakeup isn't, they, they said it's not done with. They said this week there was still more shaking up to be done. That's why you had to split up. Well, all that. Every, every fucking year it takes like three months before we know exactly what the fucking rosters are. Yeah true so so it shouldn't be any different this year like they they because they're still like i said they're still shuffling people around to give us get, give us possible matchups that we want etc um as long as you know what the best thing that they can do leave La, leave brock lesnar in las vegas that's the best thing that they could do like that would make if i don't see brock lesnar in a wwe ring during the entirety of 2019 considering i only saw him three times in 2018 um during the entirety of 2019 or during the yeah no, yeah, during the rest of the entirety of 2019. Anyway, bro, you've already talked about it too fucking much, so let's move on from him. You shouldn't even have mentioned him. He shouldn't be even a fucking afterthought to your fucking mental state, okay? He's done. He's oh, over. We're done with him. Move on so, from him. Don't worry about him. Quit mentioning him, and the <laughs> universe will agree with you as well. Dude. I'm good. I'm good. All right, we'll start talking about it. I'm good, man. He's not. He's not on TV. He's never been on TV. <laughs> let's go on and talk about people that's actually there. Well, well, let's talk about something. <laughs> well, let's talk about what happened on SmackDown. You the one that watched the shit and remember it. I don't remember <laughs> it. Put it all on me, <laughs> Tell me what happened and see if I it jars a memory. You know, like like blackout drunk. You'd be like, man, you remember what you did? Nah. Oh, you did this? Oh, fuck. I do remember that. You meant like that. So, what happened on SmackDown, bro? What happened on Smacky Down? Huh? Uh, well, I'll say, uh, what happened on Smacky Down? Well, yeah. they set up a, a specific match at Money in the Bank. Um, a match involving a singing man and a man that likes to punch people like Superman. Elias and Roman Reigns. Got a match at Money in the Bank. Yes, sir. For nothing. The guitar of the world. Okay. For nothing. Because because that's what they felt like doing. And I assume at this point, with the way things are going, that Shane McMahon is most likely going to be at ringside. Because the way things went in SmackDown, it seems like Shane McMahon and a lot yeah, of Yeah, I remember guys. Shane McMahon was talking about he touched my daddy. That's the worst thing you could do is touch somebody's daddy. Oh, and I was like, oh, you did it last week to the Miz. Oh, oh God. And, and you know what? I love the fact that they played on that. Like, I love the fact that they tried to generate more heat for Shane by, by having him come out and give this speech about how dare Roman Reigns put his hands on my father, you know, yeah. after he's just got yeah, done yeah. with the whole thing. Just got done with the same is. thing, yeah. You know, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I love that. Like, bravo to the writers for that, for, for catching that fight, catching that, trying to catch that heat, I should say. 
you know. Uh, but but yeah, like it was. It really the only the main thing I liked about the entire segment was that Roman Reigns didn't talk. Yeah, like, there was no Roman Reigns speech. There was no tough guy speech. Like he just came out, looked at the mic, threw it to the ground. Like all right, let's fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that I like. That's the Roman Reigns I need to see more of. Like. <laughs> Oh, and bravo to SmackDown as well for putting Asuka and uh, it's not Kari Sane, is it? Yeah, it's Kari Sane. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Asuka yeah. and Kari Sane. Well, I'm sorry. Like, I'm, I don't think all Japanese people look alike, just like all black people don't look alike and all white people don't I look alike. I can't remember. I can't remember everybody's names. You know. <laughs> to, start, to start with, it took me forever to remember, like, her name. Yeah. And EO. I, I still yeah, like I, I get yeah, for, forever. I was like, I O E E I O. I don't Ian, know. I E I E I O E I E I O. But yeah, so like, like, so like, yeah, her and Kari Saint. I love the fact that they put them with that. They put her with pay them them with Paige. And well, I think as, I think their manager. we we talked about it last week that that they need to, you know, come up with the the Asian connection. Yeah. Um, with because they still got like two, three other chicks that's in NXT still that are friends and are Asian, not necessarily, <laughs> you know, yeah, I know Chinese mean. or Japanese or Vietnamese or, you know, they're just, you know, in general, Asian. Indians yeah. are Asian, motherfucker. It's yeah. India is in Asia. Yeah. Um, look on the motherfucking map, you dumb fucks. Because <laughs> you're, you're questioning me right now and I know what the fuck I'm talking about. But anyway, um, like, like, there's already that click, the Asian connection click there, and it's not like I'm saying it's not just Japanese, it's it's not just Chinese. This, it it's the whole Oriental, you know, whatever they want to call them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I think that would be awesome because you got so many different styles. Yeah. And, and, then, and, you, and then you lead it all with Paige is basically their, but, their mic. But like we was talking about a few months back yeah. with the clicks. We can have four to five people in it. You got the four horse women over here from MMA. You got the four horse women from WWE. You know, you got those those four to five people clicks that you bring back now. The uh, fucking Balor Club can, you know, join forces with his boys again, yep. you know, and, and shit like that. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if that shit will really ever happen. No. But that's potential what you can do with, with all that talent that you got coming up. It's like, oh, we got too too many of this and too many of that. No, you got a lot of this and a lot of that. It's it's perfect. Well, say, so, uh, well, no, well, well, my major point in bringing that up was that was that uh, I was happy that they a it gives Paige something to do where it keeps her relevant and on TV since they don't have the whole GM positions anymore. Um, yeah, but I gotta admit, she's fucking annoying on the mic. Is she? I don't know. I'm just yeah. staring at her. Sorry. Yeah, you you got googly eyes, but she's fucking annoying, bro. She's so fucking annoying. Uh, my girl just got she's done watching so this for like the past like couple hours. She's so annoying, bro. <laughs> she's so annoying, huh? Babe, Cole says so that uh, Paige is annoying. I care she, talk. she says she doesn't care. She doesn't have to talk. Yeah, she ain't got to talk, but I'm just saying when she do, when she does talk, she is annoying. Like I don't mind her being quiet and being beautiful. It's when she starts talking that's when we got to start walking. Killing me, killing me. But um, oh, another article I read today, uh, which this article didn't surprise doesn't surprise me that much. Supposedly, Leo Rush has a lot of heat backstage. Yeah. Don't nobody like that little. Mm-hmm. Well, no, even my dogs. He's as, even as my as dogs as don't as even like him. Little, as he is on stage, backstage. Yeah, that's I know. You only play characters that good when you are that character. Yeah, true. And so I guess he's rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, walking around how talking about how he should be he should be leading the show and he should be one of the main guys on the show and blah, 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 blah. And he should be a top guy and blah, 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 blah. And he didn't rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Well, let me yeah, say this. He, he, he should, he should be back on two or five live. That show that I don't watch. Hello. Yeah. 
Yeah, back, exactly. I don't. I don't. I, well, I I want to start watching two hundred five live. I truly do. I just don't have time for it in my schedule. I'm trying to still. I'm trying to start watching T. Uh, fucking uh, NXT. I gotta try to find a time slot in October for fucking AEW. Like, man, my shit's getting filled. Cause you like too much shit. <laughs> no, I gotta watch all my DC TV shows because when it comes to comic book TV shows, fucking. There ain't nobody. There ain't nobody better than DC at this point. <coughs> Man, I'm, shield, I'm, but... I'm I'm sad. One of my TV shows had its uh, it, its finale last night. What Supernatural? It's complete finale. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't like it. It's pretty much been on on damn near your entire life, huh? <laughs> no. Nah. It's been on what? Supernatural's been on since like 98, hasn't it? 14 years, bro. 14 years, okay. 14 I years. It, I see, that's how far back I'm 30, it is. I'm though. 35. I was 21. I was legal age to drink when it came out. That's still a third of your life, dude. <laughs> like, that's a third of your life. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, I've been there since the first episode with the woman in white. But uh, yeah, that like that yeah, that was that was hard to take last night, bro. Right. It's like it's like somebody in the family died, you know. Well, welcome to my world when they canceled burn notice, when they canceled none of it, married with children. After well, no, nah, I was and... I, I yeah, I was with I watched married with children <laughs> through the whole thing, and it sucked the last few years. You can't you got to admit that shit. It wasn't uh, as good as the first few years, but they were never going to top the first few years. The first few years were just gold. Like, first, first, first year sucked. Second year was good. Third year was great. Fourth, fifth year was great. And then it was good from then for like four years. And then it just sucked for the last couple. See. So I still got my chuckles out of the last couple of but, seasons. But you're right. It was, you're right. But so, that it was a bunch of so, recycled jokes but, that they but were doing was, over and over again. Yeah, but but with Supernatural, like, yeah, maybe you had a couple of episodes throughout the season that, that were off, you know, for, from from being actually great or good, you know, to the standards of, of a Supernatural episode. You know how, how them Supernatural fans are. They're crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm looking at the perspective of, oh, I just like a good show. Um not, well, this is my honestly, life. This is my life. As long as you, as long um, as you develop your characters well, and you hook me within the first five but, episodes, I'll watch your show until it's canceled. Like, right, right. That's how I am too. That's how I am too. I, I'll bear through the bad episodes, you know, and sometimes bad seasons. Um, and, and yeah, it is. But I, I gotta say, more often than not, there was great episodes out, out of Supernatural. Like you had a good episode. It was. You know, thought provoking and emotional. You know, it wasn't just a fucking horror story or, you know, two guys going out to just slay some demons right quick. You know, you know, it was it was more to it. Um, Well, I think that that was part of the success of the of the series Angel after it split off from uh, from the Buffy the Vampire series. Yeah, I I watched that shit too. See, see, I didn't watch Buffy religiously. No, but I watched either. Angel religiously. Mm-hmm. Same here. Like, like I watched, yeah, the first to the last episode of Angel, I was watching that shit. Um, Which to me, but I wasn't right there with Buffy. I would, I would, any series ever. I would, uh, I would watch, I would watch Buffy, maybe every other week or so, like when yeah. I caught it. But when Angel came out, I was watching that shit. I was watching that shit. UPN motherfucker, yep. or at well, least I that was the station. Angel, that was the station it came on where i was from <laughs> I, I didn't even really know of the series outside of catching it at my uh at my girlfriend at the time's house um every now and then and then when angel came out i started watching that series from day one and anytime that they had a crossover with buffy that was pretty much the only time i really ever watched buffy it was like when, when yeah. It was an angel yeah, yeah, yeah other than that right yeah, right I, I, I very rarely ever tuned in but um but ultimately, yeah, man, like, like, there's been a lot of shows along those lines that were great shows that they just got canceled. Unfortunately, not every show that deserves a 14 year run gets a 14 year run like Supernatural. Um, but didn't they get picked up by multiple networks? 
Like, weren't they on one network and then it got picked up and then, like, it, it didn't get canceled, but, like, it wasn't on that network anymore. It got moved to a different network. Like, or were they on the same network all I'm pretty. Years? I'm pretty sure it was the CW the whole time, but was CW wasn't always the CW. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, UPN like they've was. changed UPN, um, and then it was uh, the WB. Yeah. Um, with the fucking frog for a while. Yeah. One of the Bruner Brothers station for a while. Um, yeah, that's where they came from. My favorite. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite shows ever. Uh, and uh, yeah, but but yeah, it was it was yeah, long time. Um. But uh, but yeah, man, it, it was sad and we, to we see it in. We watched the top two longest episodic, run, uh, longest episodic television shows in uh in the history of television. Yeah, in Raw and SmackDown. Yo, yo, I remember when SmackDown debuted. They had that big ass fist over the stage. Mm-hmm. I was like, somebody gonna die. <laughs> they gonna Owen Hart somebody with that. The Rock going to be standing there one night and he's going to be like, if you smell it, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be like, yeah, I smell shit because that hey. just squashed the shit out of you. It may not have been the fist that squashed some people, but I, a few people died on SmackDown <laughs> throughout the years. Quite a few wrestlers have almost died on SmackDown. Oh, last thing mm. before, we, before we get to some shout outs. Bro, Big shout out to this ref. Oh my God, I I can't remember his name. Did Woo! you catch the story Woo! about the referee that broke Woo! the NXT referee that broke his leg like mid match and still powered through to count the final three count? Like nah. his ankle was ninety degrees from his from uh his foot was ninety degrees from his leg, like broke his leg. And still no. counted the three. It was a Velveteen Dream and Tyler Breeze match at a house show. At an NXT house show. And I and... guess during a, during a botch spot uh, for a um, super kick, uh, for bot- during a botch spot for a super kick, one of the wrestlers tumbled into him and ended up breaking his leg. And, like, another referee came in for a couple of seconds, but he was a referee that finished the match and did the final and counted, and counted, uh, counted Tyler Breeze down, and then they wheeled him to the back of the back of the thing and took his ass to the doctor. All right. Well. Bravo to him, bro. That That's love of the business right there. Like, yeah. Yo, know, you broke your leg and still kept going? Like, I'm sorry. For me, it would have been like, hey, yeah, dude, get in here. Yo. Yo, get me a wheel. Get me the fuck out of here now into a hospital. My shit broken. You know, it's dangling. And you, <laughs> you know what? You know, you know what went through his head? He was like, man, Sankara fucking jammed his finger and quit. Man, I got a fucking broken leg. Man, they'll fucking kill me. One, two, three. The winner. Number two, dream. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, buddy. Well, I read that article. I saw the, I saw the, the, the headline for the article and i was like yeah right whatever but then i saw like the pictures and everything inside and i was like holy shit like yeah, yeah i don't uh-uh. need to see that man i don't need to see that <laughs> that is nothing i need to look at <laughs> um but yeah kudos to him for finishing the job kudos to anybody that gets hurt during any match ref wrestler whatever and exactly. finishes and is able to finish or just has the will to just fucking do it and get it done. Break a rib um, and, fucking, and fucking keep going into, into the finish. Like, what the fuck? Like, I can, as I long as look, look, I don't care if you get, if you get, if you get injured and you cannot compete anymore, then I understand. Yeah. Then we got to throw up the X. You need people to come out, check you out, roll you out, whatever. But if you get hurt, that's the name of the game. Getting hurt is your business. Yep, there's a risk you to what dislocate, you do. You dislocate your finger, Sankara. Yeah. That is hurt. That is not injured. That is <laughs> pop back in. We ready to go. Yeah, yeah. so we'll get some ice later. Shut the fuck up and get back in the ring. <laughs> Snap. But, Shit, Jerry but, Rice ain't even a wrestler. And that motherfucker, or not Jerry Rice, was it uh, Jerry Rice or Ronnie Lott? Ronnie Lott had, his, had the tip of his finger cut off. Cause he fucked yeah, it up he got, and it mangled it in the he, game. He, he got, got fucking fuck stuck in somebody's go. helmet, man. He got stuck in the fucking helmet in a face mask. 
He was doing illegal fucking tactics. That's why he got his fucking shit ripped off. If you don't do illegal shit, you don't get your fingers ripped off. Hey, but bravo to that motherfucker for wrapping that shit up and completing the game. <laughs> yeah, so he could go poke somebody else's eye out. Hey, you gotta win a Super Bowl somehow. Man, fuck that, <laughs> fuck that cheating motherfucker. Hey, everybody was cheating back then. Man, man. I don't everybody give a fuck. Cheating. Fuck all them cheating motherfuckers. <laughs> Get paid millions to play a fucking game. Fuck you. Oh, shit. Fuck all of you. <laughs> all of you motherfuckers. Hey, motherfucker, if we had had the, if we had, if we had put some effort into playing football, we could have been pro players. I can guarantee you that. We both got the drive yeah. and effort. If we had put the effort in, we could have been pro players. I I'm don't want to be a pro player. Players, but we could have been I don't want to be no pro player. I don't want to be a pro player. Fuck them motherfuckers. That's a game. Uh, Not sports. Well, it's a game. Uh-uh. Well, you got, at least, uh, at least, at least WWE is, is very specific on what they do. It is yeah. sports entertainment. It is a sport, but yet it is entertainment. Yeah. That is all of athletics and professionalism. That that's everything. Fucking boxing. That's that's not a sport. It's a motherfucking game. It's a game. <laughs> and it's over a belt and a purse, you bitches. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh my goodness killing me killing me but, you soft ass bitches you wearing them ass thick ass, ass 12 pound <laughs> fucking cotton gloves so you don't hurt your hands <sighs> bitches they all bitches huh bitches yeah <sighs> they all all of them bitches oh and last thing before we do the shout outs man uh, I know we ain't a sports show, but I, I have to give a shout out for this, man, because I know you will, too. Bravo and shout out to the San Jose Sharks. Like, hell they came back. Series. They came back. What was it? Down three. They were down three one in the series and came back and won it and were down three nothing in game seven before they before they scored four, four goals in four minutes to tie it up and won the won the series in overtime. Woo wee. Ooh, we shout out to Tiger Woods too. My, my Tiger, Tiger, Tiger Woods is back, y'all. Tiger yeah, no, Woods is back. Yeah, no, no, not his, not his back. He is back. He is back. One is one is fifteenth major. Dun, dun, that'd be dun. like Bret Hart. That'd be like uh, not Bret Hart. That'd be like Ric Flair coming back and winning his seventeenth championship. <laughs> yeah, of, uh, last last wrestling topic. I know I didn't say this four times, but uh, do you think John Cena will ever come back? In, to, to beat the record or do you think like his in-ring career is slowly coming to a close like he'll make special appearances kind of like The Rock did man but, the motherfucker yeah The Rock even fucking won the title and left for six months yeah so fucking yeah John Cena's gonna break that shit Ric Flair has already said it'd be an honor for John Cena to break it so mm-hmm. shut the fuck up it's no, gonna I happen just, it was just a question that I thought because I, I just thought like I figured he would do it before this type of a break came you know what I'm saying? Nah, like, so nah, it'd be like it'd be in months. this. It'd be like it'd be like three years from now, he's gonna come back and be like, oh, fucking, he's gonna have this incredible match and he's gonna win the motherfucking title and he's gonna be the champ and motherfuckers is gonna be like, you still got it, you still got it, you still got it. Fuck you, Cena, you still got it. Fuck you, Cena, you still got it. Right now, go ahead. It's gonna it's gonna be tandem. Fuck you, Cena, you still got it. WrestleMania 38. All right. And yeah, I was going to say, you know, it's going to be at a WrestleMania. There's yeah, no WrestleMania 38. WrestleMania 38. Yeah. 38. Cole's calling it right now. Put that bid in, y'all. Put that bid in. Download this episode and remember that. Cole said WrestleMania 38. John Cena, John Rick Cena Rick breaks Ric Flair's record. Most likely in the main event. <laughs> no, nah, it won't be in the main event. You It'll don't be think that in they would the, book that historic win to the to the main event of WrestleMania. It'll be the co-main event. Okay, fair enough. Because because the main event is going to be Ronda Rousey versus the Undertaker. <laughs> in, in a buried alive match, and he's going to kill that bitch. Uh, you really don't want to see <laughs> <Ronda> <laughs> back in WWE, do you? <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be her return match too. It ain't good enough that she gone for now, huh? <laughs> I want her buried, bro. I want her buried. I want her buried by the Undertaker, huh? 
killing me. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it would probably be a main event, but I don't want to call that prediction uh, complete. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to. I'm just going to go far as I say it's going to be John Cena, 17 championships, WrestleMania 38. And I could say with the candlestick in the main event, but. With the candlestick in the main event. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it happens, man, we'll, we'll replay this segment right here just so you can brag and say Cole called it. Three years ago, and I swear to I, I swear to God, it, it, in three years, if John Cena shows up and has to use a candlestick <laughs> to win <laughs> to win the motherfucking title, that's hey, gonna be so hey, crazy. I will personally fly you to Connecticut so we can go tell Vince McMahon to give you your motherfucking wrestling check. I want my motherfucking wrestling check, man. I want my motherfucking wrestling check now. Uh. uh. Hell yeah! Hey, we ain't even got to fly. We could road trip. We could we could Jay and Silent Bob road trip that <laughs> shit. They went from east to west. We going from west to east, bro. Critters of Hollywood. <laughs> I was just watching that movie just the other night. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb fuck! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of the best words ever spoken by Silent Bob. Oh. He's like, "Damn, said don't spray." <laughs> And don't get me wrong, that was one of Jay's best scenes, too. He's like, oh, you can always tell that Amy story, but you can't be like, AJ, that burger was good. Or AJ, let's go see a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, man. All right, you got any shout-outs, bro, before we close this out? Um, No, man. Me neither. Um, uh, You doing a show tomorrow, or are you talking about postponing for a couple of weeks? Um, yeah, I'm going to probably go two weeks, uh, for, uh, the V1 spoiler in game, all that, plus a bunch of other movies and TV. And I'm going to wrap up Supernatural and all that shit. And so, so yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot to prepare. So it's going to be a good fucking show in a couple of weeks. Um, fuck. Uh, if my back wasn't hurt, I'd do a little something. Cause I like, you know how I like fucking with people. Yeah, no I'll be like, I'll, I'll put, you know, in game, no spoilers, and, and then, then fucking spoiler the shit out of all, all of it. I was like, yeah, I'll fucking fucking all up, bro. No, Cole, I'll be I like, know it's exactly what you do. You'll be like, spoiler free episode, uh, Avengers in game, and then you just take the mic and put it next to the TV and play the entire and play movie. the motherfucking movie, bro. <laughs> I go to jail. I motherfucking. <laughs> Get fined, I get like all this shit just for a fucking joke. Hell yeah, I do that shit. I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna record that shit tonight. Uh, uh, Cole be walking away in handcuffs talking about worth it. <laughs> worth every fucking three hours of it. Oh, worth man. two hours and 58 minutes and 13 seconds of it. Oh, man. All right, y'all. So that's it for us for today. Uh, I'm going to be up next with uh, k Double's Fifth Period Music Class. We had our voting poll this week. And on Twitter and Facebook, we had a unanimous winner of the Foo Fighters, who will be my artist of the week this week. So I got a bunch of Foo Fighter songs lined up. Uh, Inspiration Corner is going to see some Nirvana songs. And then uh, I got some songs I want you to, a song I want you to hear in my EDM track of the week. So this motherfucker over here. Oh yeah, I like to bring I like to bring the good stuff to the people. I like to bring. Yeah, stuff. um, can you can you stay out my genres, man? Like I don't be jump, <laughs> I, I don't be jumping all up in your genres like that, what man. What the fuck are you talking about? You did Tony 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 last week. <laughs> what about what about that? That ain't your genre. That is my genre. <laughs> no, you don't do no motherfucking. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, so we'll leave it be on that one. <laughs> Join me in about 10 minutes. Uh, give me time to set this up, probably around 8.30 for this week's edition of K-Double's Fifth Period Music Class. Join us next week as we inch closer to Money in the Bank and we get to talking about that developing card. Uh, I'm going to have to have John on next week because I told him this week. I told him I'd call him tonight but never ended up calling him in. So next week we definitely going to have John, young wrestling fan, um, works with me at the school district. Uh, I'm gonna have him. We're gonna have him on next week for sure. Um, and all right, don't all right, let's go, man. Got his own. Come on. Yep. I uh, want to say, uh, <laughs> don't forget. I want to say, don't forget. Uh, check out Mr. Deacon's experience tomorrow. Um, potentially close by. Going, going. So, no, no. Blah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Forest presents radio. Motherfucker, check us out. Presents. Yeah. 
Check blah, 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 blah. MacGyver's on. Blah, 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 blah. Watch MacGyver, motherfucker. Shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have a great night. Peace. Take it easy.